Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us today for the next webinar in our What's New series. Hope you're all well and not too glum on this very stormy day. In today's webinar, we'll cover some of the newest features in Microsoft 365 that you can implement in your business, as well as covering some brand new features that give us a bit of an insight into the future of things that we can expect to see from Microsoft over the coming year or so. Don't feel like you need to take notes or take it all in straight away, as we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar and a follow-up fact sheet later today. Also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please do feel free to drop those into the Q&A box at the side. Um, I'll try and keep an eye on those as we go along so I can answer questions relevant to the content that we're speaking about, but also there will be some dedicated time for questions at the end. So let's take a look at the agenda for today. We'll be starting off by looking at the latest updates to Microsoft Copilot, plus some new stats around the use of AI in the workplace. We'll be looking at an overview of what you get from the new teams. Next, there's an update coming for email dictation um, in Outlook, some improvements there to look for. Next will be loop components available in Teams channels and whiteboard. And then we'll be looking at a new private line feature for Teams calling. Finally, we'll be covering that Q&A, as I said, and we'll be taking a look at some next steps that you can take as an organisation or an individual to improve your usage of Microsoft 365 in your organisation. So a quick overview of Bedrock and an introduction to, to me as well for those of you who may not have joined us before. My name's Jennifer Benj and I am the Marketing Manager at Bedrock. Bedrock is an IT managed service provider and Microsoft solutions partner for modern work. What this means is that most of the IT that we implement is based on the Microsoft stack. So that includes things like Microsoft 365, SharePoint, Teams, Azure, etc. If you'd like to know more about what being a Microsoft Solutions Partner means for you and, you and your organisation, please do feel free to take a look at our website and there's more detail there around that. We're also experts in secure, resilient networks and managed IT solutions where high performance is critical. So we work with organisations that have some of the highest security, security requirements in the UK. We managed mission critical IT and operational technology for highly regulated organisations. The most important thing we want to achieve, no matter what your organisation does, is to make sure that your IT strategy is supporting your business strategy as a whole. So we do this with the help of our eight strategic rocks that you can see on the screen here. These are skills, data, backup, strategy, investment, security, quality of service, and finally, collaboration, which is the focus of today's webinar and this webinar series in general. Uh, many people have Microsoft 365 and Teams already in their business, but they're probably not always using them to their full capacity. So we just want to make sure that if you are making that investment into the technology, that your business is getting the full use out of it and really experiencing some of the best collaborative features that those tools can offer. So. We're going to start off today with some stats. So we had a bit of discussion at the end of last month's webinar about um, some of the tools that we talked about and how some businesses are now implementing rules around who can use um, some of this AI technology. Some of the avatar technology was something we, we particularly talked about. And I just wanted to take a look at how this this wave of AI is affecting organisations in general. So here are some stats that I thought were particularly interesting. So at the moment, um, the majority of AI usage is being used in the customer service field. So you can see 56% of businesses are using AI for customer service purposes. So that is including things like chatbots on websites. So you kind of don't always even think about that as AI anymore just because they've been around for a little while now. But that is the AI technology that has sort of taken off and embedded itself most prominently at the moment across organisations. Second up is cybersecurity, with 51% of businesses using AI technology for their cybersecurity. Again, AI is just embedded within some of the cybersecurity software that we're probably all already using. 
So it's just one of those things that you implement quite early days and then you stop thinking about how AI is actually performing there for your business. Third is the 47% of businesses using it for digital assistant purposes. And I think this is probably the area where we'll see the most growth over the coming years, because the tools that we're going to look at in a moment, such as Microsoft Copilot, those tools are kind of the productivity side of things when it comes to AI. So all of those digital assist assistant type tasks, like helping you organize your inbox, compiling notes for you, condensing information into easy to track um, notes. Those are all things that Copilot can do that will just speed up your everyday work. And I think we'll see a lot of growth in that area. So as I said, um, last webinar, we ended up talking about how um, one, one business in particular had, had banned the use of Microsoft Mesh, which is the Microsoft avatar um, software that, that appears within Microsoft Teams. And you can see on the, the bubble on the on the bottom left there, 75 percent of IT leaders are currently considering or implementing bans on chat GP, GPT. So that's obviously the, the biggest name in AI technology at the moment, but there are plenty of others. And it's just a sign that organizations and IT leaders are having to start thinking about what is our process going to be around these tools? What is our policy going to be? How are we going to ensure that everything is kept secure, all our data is kept safe and, and in line with our regulations if we have any? How are we going to do that? So at the moment, it looks like 75% of, of, of those leaders are thinking, you know, the easiest way to do it will just be to ban it. Um, but then you look at the bubble on the right there, which shows 68% of users don't disclose their AI usage to their bosses. So there's a line here where if you outright ban some of this AI technology, some of your team members probably are still going to use it. And that can create even more problems than you would have had in the first place. If people are using secretive IT and different programs that you're not aware of, you can't secure them and you can't secure how your data is being used in them. So this is going to be a major discussion point, I think, over the next um, years <laughs> upcoming, because there, there's no simple answer to this. How can we make sure that the AI technology that we're using is helping us from the productivity point of view, but is also helping us keep our data safe, keep us in line with regulations. So there's a lot of discussions all over the country going on at the moment, and that's something that we want to keep an eye on from the technical perspective as well, and we'll keep you up to date with. So those are some interesting stats to bear in mind. Let's take a look at some of the Copilot updates that we have had this month. Um, so we've been talking about Copilot for a while now. Obviously, it's been the big thing that we want to talk about from Microsoft's point of view this year. And November is the month where some of you might be able to finally start using Copilot for yourselves. So on the 1st of November, Copilot became generally available, sort of. <laughs> um, so it's not actually completely available for everyone at the moment. So from the, from, from the 1st of November onwards, only enterprise customers with 300 users or more will be able to purchase and use Copilot. So they're starting off with some of the bigger organizations and, and rolling it out there to begin with. We don't yet have a date on when companies with less than 300 users will be able to get their hands on Copilot, but obviously that's something that we want to make sure that we can tell you as soon as we have that information. So we'll be keeping an, an eye on that as well. I know a few of you use Microsoft Whiteboard, so I wanted to make sure we included this section here about the latest updates to Copilot and how that will work within Whiteboard. So as you can see on the screen here, um, on the left of the screen, you'll be able to start your brainstorming session on a whiteboard with suggested content. So this is a Copilot feature that will appear across the majority of the Microsoft apps and something that I think will be genuinely useful in here in, in Whiteboard and across all the other apps as well. It just helps you get over that hurdle of starting and staring at a blank page and wondering where to start. It's not going to give you the complete finished product straight away. You can't just type in a prompt and have the complete finished article, but it will give you a list of ideas to choose from and then you can and it will build you a, a template there that you can use as a starting point. So I think, again, this is where people have a fear that AI is going to completely take over. But I think this is where there's some actual 
useful use cases that will just help us in our everyday work rather than taking over our everyday work. It's just giving you some guidelines, some templates that will help boost that productivity and um, get your get give you some ideas to get started with and get over that blank page hurdle. Um, the screen, the screenshot on the right shows how Copilot will be used to summarise complex whiteboards into notes with key themes and information that you can share after the brainstorming session. So this also makes it easy to share those notes with everybody who was in the session, as well as anyone else who needs to know what was covered. So if you end up with a massive scrolling page of notes in, in every direction and you just need to condense that down into an easy to share note format, that's something that Copilot will be able to do for you. Um, someone's asking here, how will this come into the whiteboard? Do we have control over its enablement? Of course, yeah. So Copilot in general is going to be a completely separate set of licenses. So it's not something that will automatically come into your Microsoft 365 licensing. You will have to make an additional payment for additional licenses on top of your Microsoft 365 licenses. Um, so you'll have absolute control, first of all, whether you even think it's going to be useful to you or not. <laughs> um, if, if you don't think this is going to be useful for you, then you don't need to purchase those licenses. Everything else will carry on as normal. Um, if you do think it's going to be useful, you can apply who, who gets these licenses, where it's going to be available. And you can be, we think, quite prescriptive over who's going to be able to use it or not. Um, so absolutely, you will have control over enablement of this feature. OK, let's take a look next at the updates with Copilot in PowerPoint. Um, this was something we briefly covered way back at the beginning um, when Copilot was very first launched and it was all brand new. I think this is where we're getting more information, filling in the gaps of what we were told already about PowerPoint. And I think this again shows how Copilot with PowerPoint can be an additional supportive feature that will just help you get your work done quicker and just make everything a bit more effective. So it will help you get started on a presentation faster, similar to the whiteboard feature. It will just give you a template and, and the starting point so you get over that whole blank page fit. You can give it a document or a topic to get started on and it will create a whole draft presentation for you. Copilot can transform existing written documents into decks, complete with speaker notes and sources, or it can just start a whole presentation from scratch with a simple prompt or outline. There's also a summarise feature that will condense lengthy presentations at the click of a button. So that's useful if you need to send your presentation to someone and it just needs to be a bit shorter and more condensed, or perhaps you've tested it out and it's just going to take too long to present. Uh, Copilot will give you ideas for how you can shorten it. You can also use natural language commands to adjust layouts and reformat text. So, for example, if you've just quickly written some notes in across all of your slides and you want to make sure that everything is completely uniform with regards to your company branding, um, you can do that throughout the entire deck. So some example commands you could type into the Copilot sidebar to achieve these things in PowerPoint would be uh, create a five slide presentation based on a Word document and include relevant stock photos. So it will take every, all that information from your Word document. It will give you the photos from stock photos that it thinks are relevant and it will just build that for you from scratch. You could also ask it to consolidate this presentation into a three slide summary. Again, if you know you're sending it to someone who doesn't have time to trawl through your entire presentation, it's just a really easy way to get them a shortened version and you can send it straight across. Uh, finally, you could tell it to reformat these three bullets into three columns, each with a picture. So again, that I don't think anyone particularly enjoys that part of the presentation where you're trying to line up different columns and try to get everything to just work together on a page. Hopefully that's something that Copilot will just be able to make much easier for you. OK, that's all we've got on the Copilot updates for now. I'm keen that we do keep talking about other um, updates within Microsoft 365 as well, because obviously I'm aware not everyone is going to have access to Copilot now or potentially even in a few months time. So we just want to make sure that we're keeping talking about the other relevant things as well. So in this one, we're looking at the new Microsoft Teams. And um, in March 2023, Microsoft announced the new version of Microsoft Teams and it has now become generally available on the 5th of October. 
So you might be having you might be using it now or you might not, because whether you have access to it or not will depend on your organization's policy. But most people will probably be using this by the end of the year. To know whether you are already using the new Teams, um, just look at the logo on your Teams app. So you can see that, that tiny, quite blurry screenshot on the left there. Um, that new logo, the new Teams will have a little new logo um, on it. So it just has that little button that says new on top of the old logo. Um, to start using the new Teams, if it is available to you, you'll have a slider at the top of your Teams app. So if you slide that button across you will be able to use the new teams and you can always go back again um, for now if you actually don't like that new new teams experience so actually something that's uh, affected us this very day um, we have logged into we're all using the new teams within bedrock um, but at the moment the teams live experience isn't working in the new teams so we've had to switch back to old teams to present this for you and we'll probably switch back again afterwards. It is as easy as just sliding that button along and you can jump between the two. Um, but obviously we hope that they are going to rectify some of those differences between new teams and old teams before everyone just has to use the new teams. Um, so Microsoft themselves highlight the following improvements that have come with the new teams. So overall, the app is just faster and optimised for performance on multiple platforms. Essentially, they've done some clever stuff in the back end that makes the app up to two times faster while using 50% less memory. So uh, it, typically, Teams has always been quite a memory heavy app. It takes quite a lot of power from your machine. They've done some things to make it less so and make it run a bit quicker. Um, the next thing that Microsoft highlight is that you have a simpler user experience that makes it easier to do more in fewer clicks. So they've been a bit vague around what they actually mean by this, but some of the more obvious changes um, include the ability to mark all chat messages as read with one click. So you can see on the screenshot on the bottom left there, you can just quickly mark all as read. Perhaps you've been away for a while, you know that everything's pretty much covered in all of those chats. You can mark all as read, start afresh and carry on from there. Um, the other easy to spot feature is that you can now also choose between whether you want to read new posts in Teams channels from the top or the bottom of the page. So Historically, you had to read from the bottom of the page any new post that got added to a Teams channel. You can switch that around so that they'll appear at the top now if, if that's your preference. Um, again, it's, <laughs> there's, no, there's no massive difference either way. No, neither way is better. Um, it's just whichever would be your preference. Uh, new Teams also supports, um, includes support for multi-tenant and multi-account organisations, which we, we had a few slides specifically on that in a recent webinar, so I won't go into masses of detail there, but it just enables much more flexibility for switching and working between different accounts and organisations without having to completely leave one account login. Um, and the final highlight that Microsoft are talking about is that the Smarter Teams app is ready for next generation AI experiences. So again, no prizes there for guessing. This means that they are building in more Copilot functionality and Teams will just be ready to pick that up as new features are released. We covered how Copilot will work in Microsoft Teams during last month's webinar, actually. So if you do want to catch up on that, if you missed that, just check it out on our YouTube channel in the October webinar. And we've talked quite a lot of detail about it there. Um, so a couple of things have come in on this. How do I enable this new Teams? So that slider at the top, um, if you go to your app, if, you, if your organisation has allowed you to get the new Teams, then that slider will just appear on your top menu bar. If your organisation hasn't adopted new Teams yet, that just won't appear for you. So if, if you don't have an obvious slider there, it's, it's nothing you're doing wrong. It's just that your organisation haven't allowed that yet. Um, someone else saying, good to know, it's not just me having problems with the new Teams. Yeah, I think, and particularly this week as well, we've noticed there seem to be some issues around the availability button. So on your account, you have that little coloured dot showing if you're available in a meeting, in a call, etc. Um, we've noticed there's a lot 
a strange things happening there where it's kind of showing someone's in a four hour meeting when you know for sure they're not or they've been away for hours and you know they're at their desk. It's it's kind of unreliable at the moment, um, particularly this week, that seems to be. So, um, yeah, that's that's something we've definitely noticed with the new teams. Um, there's, yeah, there's a couple of other performance issues people are highlighting. Someone's having camera and audio issues. I've not noticed that one, Gavin, yet, but maybe someone else will. Um, yeah, as the, the, there's, you know, it's a, it's a new thing. There's likely to be a few issues. Hopefully, these will be ironed out ASAP. Um, have we tried the new T Teams Town Hall event that is going to eventually replace live events? We are kind of trying some of that behind the scenes, Heather. Um, definitely, we'll be looking to. Well, we're going to have to move over from the, these live events to to a new functionality. So um, we'll keep you posted on that as well. Cool. So those are all the new features that kind of are jumping out about the new Teams experience. Um, keen to carry on hearing about your experiences with it if you are using it. But as I say, not everyone will have this available just yet. But do look out for it because I would imagine that everyone will be moving over to new Teams by the end of the year. OK. Next up, just a very brief one. We have email dictation improvements for Outlook. So this is just, like I said, very brief. There will be improvements rolling out for email dictation during November and December, and this will be available across both the Outlook app and Outlook for the web. Although this feature has been around for a while, um, obviously improvements with AI listening technology mean that hopefully this tool will just become much more accurate and reliable. So it kind of makes sense as Microsoft are doing so much with their Copilot and, and AI focused tools that some of these other features will kind of be improved as part of that process as well. Next up, we have loop components for Teams channels. So loop components, which you might you might already be using within um, the Teams chat or other tools that you can drop them in at the moment the, or the loop app itself, um, they are coming to channels. So you'll be able to create, share and edit components to collaborate without leaving your channel conversation. Um, this also means that you'll be able to copy these components between chats and channels and just move them about as you can with all of the other loop components um, and see them wherever in, in whatever location you need them to be and they'll be live there as well. So you can see from these screenshots of my Teams app currently, the one on the left is a Teams chat and has the loop component available in the icons below the chat bar. In the screenshot to the right, there is no loop icon there available yet, but that's where we're expecting it to appear. And also, once it does appear there, once the icon does appear there, um, you should have the whole list of loop components available to use within those Teams channels as well. So this will be available in standard, private and shared channels, um, but users who are external to an organisation but have access to the channel will not be able to view or edit the loop component. So that's something to bear in mind. If you do have those shared channels with external users, then they're just not going to be able to see those components at this stage. Um, we're expecting to see this coming out some point in late November or late December. You know, they've given us quite a wide window there, uh, but do just keep an eye if you think that some of those um, components would be useful in your team's channels. Please do keep an eye on that. OK. Our last new feature that we've got to cover this month is the new private line for Teams calling. So with private line, users will be able to have a private second phone number that they can make available to a select set of callers to call them directly. Um, this will bypass any delegates, admins or assistants. So if you're incredibly busy and always getting loads of phone calls that you kind of have to turn away, you can have a separate phone number which you know is kind of your priority line that you'll always answer to make sure you, you've only given it to people who will only call you in, in a, an emergency situation or a very important situation. Um, so that will have a separate number where they'll call you. Um, so this will inbound calls will be distinguished by a unique notification and ringtone. So you're not going to get them mixed up with your normal phone calls and the private line will support incoming calls only. I think we just dropped out for a second there. <laughs> I hope everyone's still with me. Um, 
So this feature is set as being in development for the time being, but we have an expected rollout date of November 2023, so it might pop up any time now. When it's released, it will initially only be available to Microsoft Teams desktop users on Windows, um, but we would expect it to be released to a wider audience as well soon. OK, so those are the quick overview of all the features that we've got to cover today. Um, I just wanted to make you aware again of the um, Bedrock stakeholder workshop that we offer, which is called the Eight Rocks Assessment. So going back to those eight rocks that we covered at the beginning of the webinar, this is just a stakeholder workshop that is designed to get a consensus within your organisation about where you want to prioritise your time, budget and your IT strategy. So there's no cost implications of doing this with us apart from a mutual investment of time. So we'll tell you a bit more about that um, in a follow up and feel free to contact us if that sounds like it would be useful to you. OK, Q&A time. So we've, I can see there's some more Q&As that I've got to cover um, that have come in during the webinar. Please do feel free to carry on dropping those in now. If you think of any other questions sort of later on today, we'll be sending out a recording of this webinar. Please feel free just to reply directly to that email with your question and either I'll be able to answer you or I can put you in touch with one of our more technical experts who can give you some follow up information as well. Um, so let's look at some of the questions that have come in. Um, oh, someone else has said that they have also had um, the issues with camera and voice um, with the new teams. So it sounds like there, yeah, there's, there's some definite issues just cropping up that I'm sure will be being addressed um, as soon as possible. Um, does Loop require additional licensing? No, nope. Loop components are available as part of your standard Microsoft 365 licensing. Um, so you can start using them immediately. If you look for the little loop icon now within your Teams chat, it should be there. Um, I will have to double check. I'm not sure if that's something that has to be switched on by your admins. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll double check that for you. Um, but it, it should be generally avail available essentially. So you can start having a, a go with loop, see if it works for you and um, start sharing with other people in your organisation as well. Um, I think that's some yeah some other licensing questions that I'm going to cover sort of as a follow up with with you Donna I think um there and and yeah some more more conversation around um the town hall events as well so yeah we'll be playing around with that um I think who knows maybe come January we'll all be meeting in the town hall instead of a Teams live event um, so I'll keep you posted on that and obviously you'll get all the latest information about how to join these events via our emails as well. OK, looks like we've covered most things today. Um, like I said, if you do have any other questions that come to you later on, please do feel free to contact us via the email and um, I hope to see you again at our next webinar, which will be in December. Can't believe we're, we've come to the end of the year already. Um, so join us again on the 7th of December um, just sign up now on, on for your place on the Bedrock website um, or Cara is going to publish the link as well for that um, in the chat. So please do join us again. There's the link for you. Um, so sign up now. We hope to see you again in December. Thank you very much for joining us today and hope you have a lovely rest of the week and see you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.